Nesting Season by Tari Serfalas. The villagers in the town near your vase had warned you before you left. Don't go to the nether during nesting season. When ghasts tend to their young, they become more aggressive, they said. You had ignored their advice. The gas couldn't be any more aggressive than they were at the normal time in the year. They always shot fireballs at you as soon as you were in sight. What more could they do? Spit acid from their eyes? The thought made you chuckle as you walked into the shimmering obsidian portal. Warm purple mist surrounded you, obscuring your vision for a moment. You smirked. There's no way that the villagers know more about the nether than me, you thought in your head. You knew that you had arrived in the nether when you felt that familiar flip in your stomach. Stepping into the makeshift cobblestone room that surrounded the portal, you took stock of the supplies you had bought. Eventually, you would make a proper nether hub, but today the mission was to find a nether fortress. When you weren't sure you had everything you needed for the trip, you walked out into the hellish landscape around you. You managed to avoid ghasts until you were about a thousand blocks from the portal. With your eyes busy scanning the hills for nether brick, you were almost struck by the fireball it spit at you. You drew your bow. The few shots you sent towards it missed as it moved fast to the side. You pulled back another arrow, aiming right between its eyes. Suddenly, a pale tentacle started to curl around one of your arms. Startled, you shot the arrow in a wild direction, missing the target completely. Not that the ghast in the distance had your attention more. This new ghast had snuck up on you while you were, been, while you were busy. You tried to pry the slimy tendrils of the gas off of you, but another one wrapped around your wrist and wrenched them apart. More curled around your legs and your waist, and you felt yourself lift off the ground. You struggled against your captor, your confusion about the situation making you panic. The gas tightened its grip on your limbs in response. Its suction cups pulled on your skin, leaving slimy pink circles that looked like hickeys. Was this what the villagers had warned you about? You knew that gas fed on zombie pigmen this way, but you had never heard of them taking humans. Were you going to be eaten? Maybe raped? You continued to try to free yourself, but the plan halted when you realized that the ghast had floated over a huge lava lake. The ghast seemed to sense that you stopped struggling and loosened its grip. That was when it started. At first, you weren't sure what it was doing as tentacles warmed their way under your armor. But as soon as your diamond chest plate started to crumple and rip apart, you felt a cold chill of realization. With unbelievable strength, the gas tore your armor from your body, letting the pieces fall one by one into the lava far below. It did the same to your clothes, as the slick tender as the slick, slick tendrils slid over your bared skin, you began to notice something. The slime it left behind felt warm, tingly. Your limbs began to relax against your own will. Muscle relaxant, yet that wouldn't explain why other body parts weren't relaxing at all. In fact, quite the opposite. The slime coating your sensitive area seemed to heighten the sensation of the tentacles rubbing against your skin. One of its suction cups pulled against your nipple for a moment and you inhaled sharply, your back arching involuntarily, and your exposed cock hard. Your mouth was open just long enough that a warm, gassed tendril was able to snake inside. You gagged on it feeling the warm slime already coating your tongue. It tasted sour, 
but there was a sweetness to it as well. As the inside of your mouth relaxed around you ga your gag, you found yourself sucking on it, drawn to the strange flavor of the gas tendril. You could smell the slime too. too. A strong musk filled your nose, sending a wave of warmth across your body. For a moment, your mind drifted and you became overwhelmed with sensations, tingling with need. You could feel the bumpy texture of the tentacle cups as they caressed your inner thighs. They seemed to kiss you every time they suckled at your skin, as gentle as a lover. Pulling your mind back to reality felt like being splashed with ice-cold water. You became aware that the tentacles suspending you in the air were positioning you in front of the gas mouth. Suddenly, you were reminded why you had been snatched up in the first place. You tried in vain to free yourself, but you could barely move your arms and legs, not to mention the massive amount of comfort that you experienced right now. After all, your boner was still raging. The gas purred quietly, almost as if to comfort you. It opened its mouth and started to push you inside, face first. You're, you closed your eyes at first, but your fear was overcome with curiosity of what lay inside the gas's mouth. The back of its throat glowed with a soft, orange light, pulsing in time with what you assumed was its heartbeat. The light illuminated its mouth shining on the warm glistening walls and with it you could see its tongues well one of them was a tongue it was bigger and flatter than the rest of the dark pink tentacles that came wriggling out of its mouth to reach for you you screamed through your squirming gag more out of surprise than any hope of being rescued your arms and legs completely useless now you were gently pushed stomach down on top of the gas's tongue, its wet, bumpy flesh rubbing against your arms and legs completely useless now. You were gently pushed stomach down on the top of the gas tongue. <coughs> the gasp seemed to say, the tentacle inside your mouth wiggled out just in time for you to moan involuntarily. The gas seemed to echo you with a cooing moan of its own. The sound reverberating around you. Its tongue vibrated against your skin as a sudden wave of pleasure washed over you. Your breather, breathing was getting heavier, deeper. The mask you had smelled earlier was stronger from inside. Its mouth and you almost lost yourself in the sensations again. You were only dimly aware when the white tentacles released you and were replaced by the warm pink tendrils surrounding the ghast's tongue. These tentacles had the same texture as the tongue, and as they caressed your naked body, you groaned needily. Your mind was growing hazy. It was too hard to think. Thinking was getting in the way of the pleasure. God, you were so horny. Was it all part of the ways gassed ate? You decided that you didn't care. So what if you were being eaten? You couldn't escape and you started to wonder if you wanted to anymore. Submitting to this monster, letting it take you all, all of a sudden, felt like the best idea in the world. Your dick twitched just thinking about the ghast's impending appetite engulfing your entire body. It was only when near darkness fell around you that you realized that the gas had pulled you inside and closed its mouth. So the soft orange glow that came from the back of its throat continued to pull slowly, and you heard a deep bobbing beat with it. The ghast's heartbeat. Somehow the sound of it calmed you. You felt your back pressed against the roof of its, its mouth. The tongue moved across your body gently, slowly, as did the tentacles around your limbs, stroking you everywhere. Warm saliva washed over you, making your skin tinkle pleasurably. 
You were reminded for a moment that you were being digested, but the thought passed from your mind when the gas purred again, and the vibration shook you, your back in between your legs. You arched your back, moaning, your blocky cock leaking pre-cum. The gas was sucking on your body as if you were just a piece of candy and you couldn't stop it from making you so fucking horny. You found yourself grinding against the tongue, wanting to rub you faster, harder. You started to whine with need as the pleasure built, begging the gas for release. The monster was the only witness to your depraved madness. Why should you hold back? Finally, electric jolts of pleasure pulsed through you as you climaxed. As your body shook and your mind melted with ecstasy, the gas tongue lapped up your juices, your baby gravy. It made a soft purring sound, and you wondered faintly if you tasted good to it. It didn't stop suckling on your body, even after your orgasm faded and you realized you were still so horny. Your libido levels might have even raised. You were even escalating towards another climax, and you were okay with this. More than okay. In the back of your mind, you knew that this was wrong, but you couldn't get rid of the thought of multiple orgasms. It didn't take long for you to achieve that second orgasm. You begged the gas for another, moaning unabashedly, realizing you quickly became addicted to the feeling of a huge warm tongue caressing your tingly Minecraftian skin. By your third climax, you wondered if the gas would either stop sucking on your body. Would it just keep going until you dissolve in its mouth completely? Somehow the idea of this made you shiver with lust. You weren't sure how long you were willingly trapped inside the gas mouth. You lost track of time as you floated in a haze of warm pleasure and hot juices, wondering if the gas was not feeding on you, but feeding on your cum. But suddenly the rhythm stopped. The tongue-like tentacles around your limbs lifted you away, and you whined from the loss of sensation. You struggled against them, not to escape, but to try to fall back on the wide wet tongue the tendrils were too strong for your weak muscles and you were easily pulled out of its mouth your squinted eyes from the sudden brightness of the glowstone near you somehow the air of the nether felt cold to you for a moment you shivered missing the insides of the gassed mouth high-pitched purring caught your attention When you moved your head to look, you saw a baby gasp. You had never seen one before. Gas nests were well hidden, and by the time they left the nest gas, they were fully grown. But this one was no bigger than a slime from the overworld, and it had its mouth wide open. You remembered what nesting season was about, but you couldn't even think about escaping anymore. In fact, you started wondering what the inside of the baby gas stomach would look like. What would it feel like? Would the baby gasp, entrance you, and stroke your cock like the old one? You moaned softly, imagining what kinds of pleasure awaited you. The mother gasped, lowered you into the baby's waiting mouth, its own smaller set of mouth tentacles lapping at your skin briefly, licking you hungrily. The orange glow in the baby's mouth was fainter than its mother's. Your arms led down its throat and you moaned as your nipples, still so sensitive from mama's tongue, were rubbed by its soft flesh as it slowly started to swallow. Its heartbeat was loud in your ears. The tongue tentacles curiously explored your body as you inched down. You spread your legs when they began lapping between your thighs and you jerked with shocks of pleasure when they found sensitive areas to taste. Your body was squeezed down its small throat until your hands found the stomach at last. The stomach walls were soft and fleshy, but what was curious was the seemingly hundreds of long, thin tentacles lining the walls. They carried you around, fingers in your arms, as they entered the stretchy organ. Your skin started to tingle sharply from the substance coating your arms. Stomach acid. It didn't exactly hurt, but it didn't certainly make all the er nerve endings in your skin go crazy with sensations. Your head pushed in and you could see the inside at last. The dark pink laws were lit by only the soft pulsing glow on one side. 
Veins in the flesh pumped blood to beat on the thundering heartbeat of the ghast. But you didn't get to see Valong because the stomach tentacles wasted no time caressing your face and you closed your eyes on instinct. Several of them forced themselves in your mouth. They wrapped around your tongue and down your throat, but your muscles were so relaxed that you didn't even gag as you sat around in pure ecstasy. As more of your body gradually slid down into its hot, humid stomach, the baby gas purred. <coughs> the vibration of its concentrated in its throat, where your pelvic area was, and you moaned through your squirming gag from the sudden wave of tingling pleasure. Every inch of your skin was touched by the tentacles as you were slowly squeezed inside. They even began to explore crevices in your body, even the most mundane. Your hearing became muffled when they plugged your ears, but suddenly you could hear all the tiny moans and gasps of pleasure so loud in your head, and you didn't even mind anymore. Thankfully, they left your nostrils alone, quiet, as the ecstasy silenced you and your body. You didn't want to pass out before you could feel the tentacles on the rest of your sensitive skin. It seemed to take forever, but at last, the hot, flushed area between your legs broke free of the constricting esophagus, and was immediately assaulted by stomach tendrils. Your wanton moan was, defi was, defi was defining in your own head. Nothing was scared to the ten no nothing was sacred to the tentacles as they rubbed and tugged at your body, and when your legs were pulled inside, you tried spreading them as far as they could in the tight, fleshy spray face. Your asshole was teased for only a second before tendrils started snaking inside. Every hole was filled. The uncaring tendrils thrusted in and out, coating everything in hot, tingling acid. Your limbs were forced wide apart, your weak body hugged by the walls, stroked by the tentacles. Instinct and a mad lust took over your mind as you bucked your hips against the tentacles, against the soft, fleshy walls. Your animalistic growls and moans filled with your head, fueling your release, and soon you climaxed. The tendrils in and around you became more animated as it sucked up your juices, and it seemed as if barely any time had passed before you convulsed in ecstasy one final time. You were so filled, so full of lust and tentacles and various fluids that you didn't care where you were anymore. You could barely remember anything. As that final climax filled the gas stomachs more and more, each time to take higher and higher amounts of pleasure, you wanted it to last forever, but it could not. The musk and the acid became too much, and at some point, you passed out, your vision blurring and fading as you rode the waves of one last Minecraft orgasm. You blinked slowly as you woke in your bed. The memory of what happened to you trickled out of fog in your mind, and the shadow of pleasure danced around your spine. As you stood up, your empty inventory was the only thing that reminded you that it had not been a dream, a nightmare, a fantasy. You decided that you wouldn't avoid the nether for a while, but in the back of your, your mind, you knew it wouldn't be for that long, as you waited to be ingested again by a ghast during nesting season. <clears throat> the end, and Happy New Year.